Good morning. It's Sunday, March 15th, the third Sunday of Lent, and I'm in an empty church because we've decided to close down the building in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. But we still want to stay connected with the Congregation of St. Andrews and with others. And so we're hoping that through technology, we're able to do this. So this morning, I'm going to uh, share a scripture reading with you and the sermon that I had already prepared, hoping that we would be together here. And hopefully people will be able to share in this, maybe take some time apart and uh, reflect on it and still feel that they're having an experience of worship and community. I'm going to begin, as we always do, by lighting the Christ candle. And maybe if you're watching this at home, you might want to get out a candle yourself and light it. And uh, take an intentional time to be in holy space and holy community, knowing that Christ is with us. Our reading today was from the Gospel of John, and it's a familiar story about Jesus and a Samaritan woman from chapter 4, verses 5 to 42. It's a long reading, so I'm actually going to skip over part of it. But it begins with Jesus and his disciples coming to a Samaritan city called Sichar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jo Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask of me, a woman of Samaria, to have a drink? Jews did not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty, or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship God the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more 
four believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. For the word of God among us, for the word of God around us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. I want you to use your imagination for a minute. In these maybe pre or post pandemic times, imagine yourself sitting at Tim Hortons and you're quietly enjoying your double double from an environmentally friendly mug, of course, ceramic mug, and you see a young person come in the door and they're kind of ragged looking. They might have uh, their long hair twisted into dreadlocks, maybe they've got some tattoos, some scruffy clothing. You can't actually even tell if they're a boy or a girl. They're wearing a large backpack, and you figure that they're either a wandering traveler returned from somewhere, or maybe they're homeless. And as you're watching, they stand there and they cough for a few minutes before letting out a loud sneeze and wiping their nose with the back of their hand. And then they walk over to the table where you're sitting, and they sit down, and they point at your coffee and, and ask, hey, mind if I have a sip of that? Yes, each one of us would definitely cringe. Even prior to these germ-phobic days of pandemic, sipping from the same cup as strangers, in times such as these, you don't even want to grasp the same door handle as a stranger. But 2,000 years ago, things were different. The village well was for everyone, people, animals, strangers, and there was no endless supply of disposable cups. You brought your own, and when necessary, you shared one. In the desert, the priority wasn't sanitation. It was quenching thirst. In our society, from a young age, it's drilled into all of us not to even talk to strangers, let alone share a drink with them. So in some ways, we too should be shocked by the story of Jesus striking up a conversation with a Samaritan woman. But to the listeners of John's Gospel, this is a story that would make them cringe on many different levels. First, not only are Jesus and the woman strangers to each other, but they are from vastly different cultures. We all remember the story of the Good Samaritan. Samaritans and Jews were bitter enemies. As we are bluntly reminded by the author in this story, who kind of offers a stage whisper saying, Jews and Samaritans don't share things together. Further, 2,000 years ago, a decent and proper woman, particularly one out on her own, would never engage in conversation with an unknown man. And yet, here in John's Gospel, we find the longest conversation recorded in the entire Bible between Jesus and anyone, let alone a woman. Which tells me it's pretty significant. And that perhaps the content of the conversation is not so important as the fact that the conversation happens at all. Jesus has an interesting habit of associating with people who the rest of the world shuns. He notoriously chats up tax collectors and prostitutes, he approaches those diseased with leprosy and other ailments. He enters into the homes of those who are grievously ill or on the verge of dying, and even those who are already dead. He breaks social boundaries by interacting with all people equally as brothers and sisters, deserving of dignity and respect, worthy of healing and wholeness. Jesus offers inclusion to those who are outcast or marginalized, to those who are damaged or broken in body, mind, or spirit. This Samaritan woman at the well is no exception. Divorced, widowed, an adulterer, we don't know the details, and the details don't matter. This unnamed and most likely uneducated woman with a hint of a shameful past is invited into 
conversation without condemnation or judgment. As a matter of fact, although it may come across as a blunt demand, give me a drink of water, Jesus is actually making himself vulnerable before this woman by confessing his own need, his own thirst. He has no cup, no bucket, no jug for drawing water. Tired from miles of walking through the desert, he needs to rely on the hospitality of a stranger to quench his own parched throat. But this simple request for a drink turns into so much more. With startling assertiveness, the Samaritan woman turns it into a theological debate. She challenges Jesus over the worship practices and the ancestry of the faith. And in return, she learns that there is more to water than meets the eye. The literal water she has been drawing daily from the well is no match for the metaphorical living water, the unconditional love in which we are doused by God. Suddenly, this woman, transformed herself by their conversation, rushes off to tell others to share the good news of God's precious gift of eternal life, of grace, of living water. When's the last time you risked a conversation with a stranger? It's usually difficult to enter into something deeper than small talk about the weather or sports, these days, of course, about the coronavirus. Even with people we know well, our regular conversations often remain superficial chit-chat, or even worse, idle gossip. Who's doing what? Who's going where? Did you hear about this? One of the greatest privileges of being a pastor, and I would actually lump hairdressers and bartenders into the same category, but is that people tell us their truth. They confide in us. When they open their hearts and they share their stories, they share their fears, they share their doubts, their personal struggles and their sorrows, they lay bare their souls with trust and with vulnerability. Not that we can solve anything, that's not the point. Our job is simply to listen, without judgment, without condemnation, to be safe vessels holding people's stories, witnessing their lives, and being privileged with the opportunity to ask them questions that the rest of the world doesn't dare to ask. Questions like, how do you feel about that? Why does this matter so much to you? When do things begin to change? Where is God in all of this? We are all capable of such gospel conversations. When we take risks in engaging with others, hearing their stories, and making safe space for them to share their truths. When we also allow our own vulnerability to be revealed, to be honest about our own needs. When we don't allow social conventions and artificial boundaries to prevent us from speaking with other human beings who are really just thirsty, hungry, tired, and lonely creatures just like us. We don't need to share our coffee cup with that unlikely character we meet at Tim Hortons. But we may be surprised that what we learn about them and about ourselves when we have some conversation might be very interesting. As Christians, our faith is not meant to be a stagnant puddle of water, but something living and flowing and continually transforming. And this doesn't only happen when we sit by ourselves in silent meditation. It happens in dialogue with others. We are social beings. We're created to interact with one another and to live in community. We are Trinitarian people, which makes the COVID-19 pandemic even more challenging 
as we're advised to stay away from one another, to socially distance ourselves, and to go into self-isolation. How might we still find the meaningful and important ways to stay connected that we may share in deep conversations at the well? The thirst quenching, transforming conversations that may surprise us to reveal God. My prayer for us all, in addition to our health and our well-being during these difficult times, is that our current state of social distancing doesn't become the norm, that it doesn't become a habit, or even worse, an excuse to stay away from others. Let's not allow our fear of germs to be one more reason to fear strangers or those who are different. We don't need to share from the same cup, but maybe by sharing the conversation, sharing our truth, and vulnerably sharing our fears, we might be surprised to witness God's spirit at work in the lives of other people. May this be so. May we all be well. Thanks be to God. Amen.